in search of soil. Why was the theory of humus put out there and why did it make sense at the time originally? Yeah, um, and, and uh, a lot of that history will probably still need to be written. Um, and, uh, but but the, the abridged version that I um, am aware of is uh, that uh, starting with the late 1700s, researchers were interested in finding out the world around us. And, and one big part of the world around us is soil and figuring out um, what organic matter and soil looks like, they had to get it out because you, it was impossible at the time uh, to study the organic matter in soil without getting it out of, away from the, from the minerals and the rocks. Um, and the way to do that, that uh, the first uh, scientists that, that tried that um, in earnest figured out, you have to do it with a certain extraction. Uh, they used alkaline uh, solution to do that, and it worked beautifully. Um, you get a brown soup that comes out of the soil, and then they were able to study it in, in greater detail, looked at what, what, element, what atoms are in there, that there's nitrogen in there, that there's carbon in there, that there's oxygen in there, all these things that, uh, that they needed to figure out in the 1700s and, and 1800s. Um, and, uh, and, and then uh, researchers found out that when they used different alkali or they precipitated um, or made less soluble or more soluble these solutions, uh, then they could, um, they could uh, extract different types of organic matter that clearly had different properties. Uh, and over the, uh, the, the 1800s and, and early 1900s, that generated scholarship um, that tried to explain the behavior of soil organic matter uh, with its extractability and led to um, the classification of these different fractions that one can obtain uh, with words such as humic substances, uh, humans, uh, fulvic and uh, humic acids. And, and these kind of um, useful fractionation and, and characterization techniques generated in the mid 1900s uh, a scholarship that said there is, a, there is a process called humification that generates these humic substances. And these humic substances um, are large uh, and therefore because they are large, they cannot be eaten by microorganisms. Um, and therefore th we call them recalcitrant that means that they will stay in the soil because they are, have this material property. Um, and, and this is uh, what humus uh, is, is, uh, is composed of. And, and that, that is um, what I, I learned in, in university um, uh, uh, 20, 30 years ago. Um, and, uh, and it turns out once we had the ability to look closer, to actually see what the chemistry of organic matter looks like, what it looks like in situ in soil without extracting it. We realized um, that we were looking at a mixture of materials that are still in a, a representation of what's in the soil uh, after extraction, but it is not um, a material that is anywhere as, as this mixture is, is not found in soil per se. Um, so uh, this, this is similar, I, I use the analogy with a, with a fruit smoothie very often. Um, now, if, you, if you're blending together a cherry and an, an orange um, and a strawberry and a raspberry, uh, and you have never drunk or eaten before these fruit um, and somebody serves it to you, then you might be inclined to say that this is a, this is a new fruit. Um, but in fact, it's a mixture of four fruit. Uh, and and, and that's, that's fine if you're, if you're just interested in a taste, but if you're interested in reproducing it or, uh, or understanding what the individual components in that fruit smoothie are doing in your gut, you need to know that this was a raspberry and a strawberry and a banana or whatever you put in there. Um, so it's the same question here. Um, we need, when we want to know what 
what is a microorganism actually exposed to when it, uh, when it um, uh, is in the soil? Or what is that organic compound in the soil interacting with, with minerals um, uh, or in the water uh, when water flows through soil? Then we need to know these individual compounds. We cannot, we cannot um, uh, assume that th this mixture, uh, this fruit smoothie mixture, uh, is, is, is the compound in there. It is not. It is still a cherry and a banana and orange and a strawberry. Um, and we need to know that there is a strawberry in there and it's not a new fruit that is a mixture of the four. Um, and, and so um, you know, starting about 20 years ago, scientists have, have started is significantly to question uh, the, um, the existence of this process humification in the context of making these large recalcitrant humic substances. Um, at the same time, we have um, as a collectively, as a, as, a, um, uh, as a scientific community, refined our understanding that of course, soil organic matter is largely a product of microorganisms. It's the residue broadly speaking, of microorganisms. Um, and, uh, and, but it, but it's, not, it's not these large molecules um, that fit neatly into this uh, understanding of humification and humic substance production that we, we grew up with um, decades ago. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out some of the great clips and watch the full interviews right here on In Search of Soil.